What's up everybody? Welcome back. I'm Abe, this is Eve Online, and we're going to talk about mining for a change of pace here. <clears throat> so, I am in Jerry, which is a procurer class ship. Now, I'm in Jerry, and let's look at the, uh, the ship tree. So if you're an alpha character, you have probably one ship to mine in, and it's a nice ship. It is this Venture. The Venture is quick, and it gives you mining bonuses, and um, my bonuses to yield, bonuses to your warp core strength, and so on and so forth. But if we look at it, if we look at the information, its ore capacity, or its ore hold, can only hold about 5,000 cubic meters of... Uh, of ore at any given point in time. It allows you to hold two drones and and control two drones and uh, overall it's a very useful ship but it's just kind of the starting ship in the whole mining fleet. The next step is a barge and then after that is an exhumer. Now there are other ships like the Rorqual which give boosts to other mining ships in your fleet and so these are you really kind of only want to be flying one of these if uh if you're the lead sort of foreman of a mining fleet and you have a bunch of people there to not only protect you but also to benefit from the boosts that you're providing if you're just straight mining uh start out with the venture if you're an omega class <laughs> citizen so to speak, of EVE Online, the next step that you should get, you might look at these. And so just to go through them, you've got the Procurer, which has bonuses to shield uh, hit points and reduction in mining duration. So the amount of time that it takes to get you one full cycle of uh, ore from a, of an asteroid. And it gives you a 50% bonus to drone damage and hit points. If we move over here, you get a 5% bonus to the miners in the range, you get the same reduction in the duration and you get a 25% reduction in the duration and activation cost. So that looks pretty attractive. And in the retriever, you get a 5% bonus to sh uh, the ore hold capacity, which also looks attractive. And so you might be wondering, why am I flying a procurer instead of a retriever, right? Because if I've got, I don't know, level four in mining barge, I get 20% more than than the standard ore hold capacity, which is 22,000, right? So if I can hold 22,000 ore, which another 20% of that gives me 4,400, so 26,400 cubic meters of ore versus 12,000, like why why would I do that? Because I can stay out much longer with this, fill my ore hold, and then drop off a good like almost 25k worth of ore for each each cycle. So why you might want to fly a procurer and why most people do is because of the ship shield hit point bonus that you get here and your bonus to drone damage and hit points. So you might be wondering, and rightfully so, why you need to worry about your shield hit points if you're mining so and especially if you're mining in high security space so i'm in an 0.5 security uh area with some asteroids and the corporation that this character is in likes to be or is very possessive of its ore fields and specifically the ice that that spawns randomly in the general vicinity and a lot of other corporations are interested in locking down that ice uh, those ice fields when they spawn as well. And so even though you might exist in uh, or you might be mining in high security space, other players will do what's I, I forget the official term for it, but essentially they'll they'll come and suicide gank you. Um, they'll send somebody in with a certain skill set in a catalyst because catalysts can dish out quite a bit of kinetic damage over a very short period of time. And all they need to do is blow your ship up before Concord comes and blows them up. And it's very doable. If you are in a ship with not too much in the way of defenses, you're gonna be a sitting duck and you're gonna be very easy prey for that. And as such, people and corporations will feel like they can push you around. 
Now, if you're in a procurer and you've, you've got 20% extra shield hit points, your drones do 50% more damage, and if you outfit it in such a way as to increase your resistances in your shields. So I know that the Catalyst, which is a destroyer class Kaldari ship, I believe. Maybe Kaldari? Yeah. I think it is. Anyway, I know that the Catalyst gets kinetic ammo boost damage, and that's what makes it such a threat. So I've got two kinetic shield uh, deflection fields here and a thermal to sort of, sort of shore up my thermal and then just an overall invulnerability field. So my resistance is at 86%. They can come at me and they can really lay in some damage on me, but odds are real good that I'll be able to either survive long enough for Conquer to come up and blow them out of the sky or for to survive long enough for me to get back to the safety of a base. So floating around in a retriever sort of sets you up for failure because people view you as an inexperienced miner and a noob and will attack you as a result. So is that worth the trouble? Do you, do you have any problem with that? You know, some people might not worry about it, so don't, you, you get to decide kind of what's important to you. So additionally, I've got two anti-EM screen reinforcer rigs and a core defense field extender. And overall, I've got 50,000 effective hit points, right? So simulated, I'm at like 56% on EM, and that's my lowest resistance. 63 in explosive, 69 in thermal, and 86 in kinetic. So I'm very much protected. Now, if we want to get into fitting and what else you might want to consider, definitely using laser upgrades to the highest quality you can get and sort of the highest version of the, the mining lasers that you can use uh, are useful. But first and foremost, Pick the right ship for you. If you can't afford to lose a 20 million isk ship that's outfitted with, you know, another 10 or 12 million worth of components, don't fly it, right? If it gets blown up and you go back to, you know, doing the career agents to make a little money because you can't replace what you just lost, that's bad news. So don't do that. Set yourself up for success. Fly something that's very hard to kill if you're going to mine. Uh, don't worry too much about the overall capacity of it. If your ore capacity is only 12,000, fill up your 12,000 isk hold, your, or uh, your 12,000 cubic meter hold, drop it in a canister, and keep mining. Drop it in another can, like drop the next load of 12,000 in that same canister, and then go get your, uh, for me, I'm a Mar, so I've, I've got a Bestower, which, if we look at that, at its base capacity, it's got 4,800 cubic meters. And then if you fill the six low slots with cargo expander twos, you can get that over 26,000. So if you have a cargo container hovering in space that's got 24,000 cubic meters of ore in it, you can then go get your bestower, grab it, bring it back to base, drop it off, hop back in Jerry or whatever you call your, uh, your ship or your barge, and, and then go and mine 24,000 more. And that's not ideal, but that's what solo mining involves, right? And so moving to the Tech 2 version, you get into Exhumers and you get the Hulk, the Skiff, and the Mackinac. And again, you're, dealt, you're dealing with the same sorts of issues. Um, Exhumers give you, you know, 4% bonus to all shield resistances across the boards just for your Exhumer skill. Um, but most people pick the skiff because the mining barge skill gives you more ship shield hit points as well. And again, with the 50% drone damage uh, increase. So, so first things first, understand like what ship you should be flying. And, and if you're in high security space, you don't have any problem with gankers, go ahead and fly whatever you want to fly. But keep in mind that you are sending a signal by flying it. Uh, a lot of corporations will not let you out the door in a retriever. They will stop you and tell you that for the guild's sake that you need to be flying a procurer. Another message that it sends is that you and your corporation, not guild, uh, you and your corporation don't know what they're doing and aren't well defended. And as such, you can incur or draw 
war declarations on yourself and on your corporation by flying things that are indefensible. Um, so yeah, so know what ship to fly. So first off, start with the Venture. It's a nice ship. Use the highest stuff you can and mine as much as possible. When you get into the mining barge, you probably want to use a Procurer. And the Procurer, uh, if we're, there we go gives you a 50 cubic meters of drone capacity and 25 cubic meters of drone bandwidth. Now, two things to be aware of. Light drones use five megabits of, uh, per second of bandwidth each. So you can fly five, you can carry 10, um, and you're good to go. The mining drones, or at least mining drone level ones, are also light drones and they also only require five megabits per second of bandwidth and take up five cubic meters of space. Now if you're mining ice, ice mining drones there are the each unit of ice is very large and if you want to fly ice mining drones each drone takes 50 megabits per second of bandwidth to control. So you can look at this procurer and say, okay, well, it looks like I'm not going to be using any ice mining drones. And that's correct. That also is partly why you might want to bump up to a much more expensive ship, which is this, which gives you a 50 megabit per second, per second drone bandwidth. And that allows you to control one ice mining drone. Is that worth the price jump from the procurer, which is just under 20 million to the skiff, which is, it says 270 million, but right now it's selling for about 300 million because I was looking. Um, is that worth a, a, you know, a 100x in, or I guess a 10x increase in price or more? Maybe, but it hasn't been for me yet. I obviously have the skills for it. I've got Mining Barge 5, I've got Exumer 4, um, but I just don't have the money lying around, or, and, and I'm not willing to put it uh, to really use it to that effect. The the cargo or the ore hold is only 3000 cubic meters larger, uh which is relatively insignificant. And yeah. So obviously there are more differences between the two, but for me for the time being flying around in a procurer makes the most sense. So the venture go to the mining barge is your next step. There are sort of tech two versions of the venture, which is the prospect and the endurance. Um, again, I, I don't know if that's worth it. These enable you to use cloaking devices and flying around in a cloaked, I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's worth it to you, but it hasn't been for me and I'm not overly concerned with it. So, so this is sort of what you're looking at. You've got barges, exhumers and frigates and you can step your way up until you know you're doing more and more um, and as you move past the Noctis which is kind of the if you can as you can tell by the industrial bonuses it gives you bonuses to tractor beams salvager duration and so on and so forth it's kind of a salvaging specific ship it's very expensive just for a salvager and I personally I just prefer to use a very cheap destroyer to do the same thing but that's me um, then you get into the Orca, which is an industrial command ship. And again, this is a much cheaper version of the Rorqual, which this costs about 750 to 800 million ISK. Gives you a lot of boosts to help your fleet's mining uh, capabilities and drone information and all kinds of other stuff. Tractor beams, survey scanner, uh, you name it, shield, remote shield boosting. Um, and then you step up and it's it's more effective at the Roracle stage. So this is not something that you generally want to just take out and mine with, but if you did, again, only one only bandwidth for one ice mining drone, uh, you get a much bigger ore hold capacity, but it's up to you to decide whether that's worth it to you. A lot of times what will happen is one person will fly an Orca or one of these command ships they'll go in a fleet with a bunch of smaller skiffs or procurers you know these barges and exhumers and people will they'll set up a a uh, a mobile tractor unit 
And as people mine, they jettison out the cargo that they or the ore that they've mined. The orca or the rorqual, the command ship, is then sitting at the mobile tractor unit, looting the ore as it gets tractored in and looted. And so it, they'll fill up their cargo hold. They'll go. They'll drop it off at the station and they'll come back. And what that allows the rest of the fleet to do is to just sit and mine nonstop. So they'll fill their cargo hold, they'll jettison it. That can with 12,000 cubic meters of ore gets, you know, tractored into the mobile tractor unit. The orca or the command ship loots it, goes, drops it off, and just does runs, right? Just runs cargo runs. And every time they show up, they give a boost, which lasts for a few minutes makes everybody mine faster and more efficiently, and then they loot and, and the cycle continues. So this is kind of a mining 101, just as far as what ships you might want and how you might want to consider, the things you want to consider as you're, you're looking to buy some. Um, we can get into this ship fitting a little bit more in depth but uh, well, we can do that in the next video. But right now, this is the message I want to send. Use a ship that is, that is going to serve the specific purpose that you need it to. So use these ships that are, that are geared specifically toward mining. Does this mean that you can't you know, grab your bestower and you've got your large cargo hold capacity? You've got it juiced up to you know, 26,000 cubic meters does this mean that you can't use the, the high slot, which, let's see, where is it? Structure, capacity, capacitor, targeting. Uh, there we go. So, does this mean you can't slap two mining lasers on here and some mining laser upgrades down here in the low slots, put some shield boosters on your medium slots, and then just go to town and mine with your bestower? Sure, you can totally do that. But the, the traits that you get here make it a slower and less effective process. So if we go back over here, you know, you get additional cargo capacity per skill, max velocity, that's all great. But the moment you get into a venture, suddenly you get bigger yields and all kinds of other things. So that's it for mining, at least as an introduction. And... In the next time, we'll, we'll look into uh, outfitting the ships and go from there. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.